Welcome to Inside Healthcare. Two Minnesota moms are on a mission to help parents who have lost a child. They are creating a special memorial in our state that will honor children. We are very pleased to have with us Julie Regeth and Lynn Sonnet. Um, thank you for sharing your story with us. Really a pleasure to have you with us. I know you're very busy. so. You know, and I know the memorial is something that's very personal to you. Mm -hmm. You both, uh, sadly, have lost a daughter. And um, maybe before we talk about the memorial, tell us about, tell us about your girls. Um, yeah. Lynn? Um, we lost our 24-year-old daughter, Andra, March 25th of 2019. And it has been a life-changing event. Um, would love to bring this angel to the city of Woodbury to just have a place to go, have a place for families to connect and meet up and talk about Andra, talk about our kids. And what so, was she like? Oh, she was vibrant. She just had a zest for life and happy and just lively. Her laugh was very contagious. She is hard to forget. Um, I just hope everybody feels free to say her name and talk about her. and tell us when they dream about her, or tell us stories about her that when they encountered her. Yeah, I'd love to hear about her. Keeping her. Keeping your memory alive, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Miss her every day, every single day. Well, I bet mm -hmm. a day doesn't go by. Yeah. No. Or a minute. No, not yeah. a moment. Yeah. yeah. And Julie, tell us about Natalie. Natalie, my daughter, um, was 32 when she died, and she died February 19th of 2020. And uh, when I think of Natalie, when I heard Lynn talk about Andra, I just, um, I, I just picture Natalie with her curly red hair, with her aviator glasses, and wearing overalls. That was who she was, and she was my pal. We did a lot of things together, and uh, just uh, the joy of my life. Loved um, horses, loved sandboxes, loved doing cartwheels, loved swimming in the ocean, all sorts of all sorts of fun things. And um, like Lynn, um, our family misses her, and we are blessed that this angel of hope came into our lives mm -hmm. for our children and um, any child that has died. And for viewers may not familiar, what is the Angels of Hope? What is that all about? The Angels of Hope is a project that I first learned about in Duluth, Minnesota. I was there celebrating actually Natalie's birthday with my sister and my niece and we spotted this beautiful angel across from Lake Superior and we went up to her and we walked around and she has the names of children that passed too soon all around her on bricks. And it touched my heart, so I came home and did a little bit more research. And the angel started um, by a gentleman who wrote a book called The Christmas Box in 1994, in which a mom went to see the angel. And people loved that that angel was there, and that angel was in Utah. And then uh, it, it come to find out that then many parents, many families, many people that have lost children wanted to make that angel in their hometown. Mm -hmm. So at this point, there's over, I think there's almost 170 of these Angel of Hope wow. Peace Gardens statues mm -hmm. where communities and families can go to to, to um, honor their, their children. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple here in Minnesota. So this will, be one, in this Minnesota. will be one of the newest ones in, in Minnesota. Correct. Tell us about your Angel of Hope Memorial. Our Angel of Hope will be located in the Memorial Park of the City Hall building, right next to the Veterans Memorial. Um, she'll be tucked right in up on a little hill amongst some trees and there's going to be so many flowers around her and they're the master gardeners from the University of Minnesota. The sketches look beautiful. Did up such a beautiful plan and each season there'll be different flowers in bloom and wave with the wind and just going to be a beautiful, tw tranquil place to go. And the statue is actually mm -hmm. a little girl um, with her eyes upturned to the sky mm -hmm. and her hands up. And she'll be in the middle mm -hmm. of all of those flowers. And we can walk around her. And then there'll be plaques there 
that families and community members can purchase a plaque for their child mm -hmm. and go there and um, see the names of all of the children in our community mm -hmm. that have that have passed and maybe go there alone go there as a community like Lynn also was saying um, there'll be a yearly vigil where we can say their names mm -hmm. because as she you know as Lynn was saying it's important to to say their names and remember them and 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 this will honor and um, bring a lot of good things for our community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why well, you say it's really important. I mean, this is so important. Why why do you, you I think we've talked before and you've said that you feel like Natalie's on this journey with you and stuff. Why is this so important to both of you? I for me, it's very important because there are so many young lives that are lost. Oh my gosh, lately. And it's just happening more and more and you feel alone. You feel like people don't get it or they stop calling or I mean I have great friends, great family and everybody is just so gracious but yet inner self you feel alone and to be able to go to this angel and sit and see the beauty and just look at her and reflect it's just you get goosebumps when you get up to an angel. You really do. Mm -hmm. It's it's an awe feeling that you won't know it until you walk up to the angel, and it's it's amazing. It's an amazing, amazing place. And then I found um, knowing Lynn, knowing another parent, mm -hmm. another mom for me, has been very. Um, very helpful. I mean, there's no words to describe how helpful it is for me to have a, another mom mm -hmm. that understands. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and so w another one of our hope is that we can all gather sometime, maybe at the mm -hmm. Angel, maybe for a cup of coffee, maybe, um, maybe one, maybe many, you know, depending on the comfort level of everybody as we go along, but to be there for each other. Right will be an important piece of our angel project as well. And you're doing this all through donations from generous people in the community and that? We are, we are. We are um, looking for donations to help this project go forward. And um, we have a Facebook page, Angels of Hope Memorial, Woodbury. Mm -hmm. And because we're working with the city of Woodbury along with the Woodbury Community Foundation on a lot of our, our project and without everybody in our community this wouldn't go forward so we right. feel again very very blessed that, about the people that we've met on our journey and um, then we also have um, a, a Woodbury Angel page on the Woodbury Community Foundation that tells a little bit more about Andrew mm -hmm. a little bit more about Natalie and a little bit more about our angel and um, on September 17th we're going to have our first walk and we hope to do that at the Woodbury City Hall near the Veterans mm -hmm. Memorial. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Right. So we can see the angel site. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and we don't know a date yet, but we know that the angel um, was being built in Salt Lake City, Utah, and she is ready to come to Woodbury whenever um, the timing is right for us. So we are pretty excited about that too. Mm -hmm. And you said she is just about ready? Yeah, she's ready to ship. We just have to give the word. And when do you anticipate that you'll actually open up the memorial then? Well, they're talking groundbreaking possibly in October just to get some of the earth moved um, to get ready and possibly planting some plants. But most likely in the spring we'll be up and running and get it It'll probably take about a month. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to dedicate possibly June, have a dedication with, mm -hmm. and use that possibly as our date for our annual memorial service. Mm -hmm. Well, so, it really mm -hmm. has been a pleasure to have you as guest on the program and sharing your stories. So thank and you. We appreciate you. It's open to anyone that wants yes. to take part in Anybody this. that's lost a child of any age. Mm -hmm. Well, thank Everyone you. Everyone is a child of someone. Lynn. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be back with more right after this. Get it, slip it, cuff it, check it. Talk to doctor now and share it. Get it, slip it, cuff it, check it. High blood pressure silently affects millions of Americans. Staying on top of your blood pressure is as simple as these four easy steps. 
self-monitoring is power. Visit manageyourbp.org to learn more. We are coming to you from the urgency room in Egan, and we are talking with Dr. Rob Anderson, and you have a new online care. Why don't you tell us all about that? Yeah, so we have a new online platform. Um, I mean, this developed back during the peak of COVID. Uh, we developed an online platform where we just uh, switched providers to um, a local-based company called Zipnosis. They do a lot of the AI behind it to provide the background to allow our providers to have that conversation with patients um, through a, a telehealth uh, platform. And how does this work? You know, I, you just go online and, yep. yeah? It's very simple. You just go online, go to our website, theurgencyroom.com. If you just Google Urgency Room, they'll bring you to our website. And it's, it's listed out very easily on there how to access online providers. And the unique thing um, with our platform now is there's an option for a synchronous and also an asynchronous option. So if you're busy at work and you want to just go onto our website, um, it'll bring you to the online care. You can type in your symptoms that you're having. Wow. And then a provider can review that um, and then send you a message back. Um, so it's done at your convenience. But if the provider feels like some additional questions need to be answered in person, it can be done via telephone or via video conference, and then appropriate medications can be prescribed. I was going to say, mm -hmm. what if you need um, medications or, or yep. need a prescription? We'll send those electronically to whatever pharmacy um, you would like the medicine to go to. Or if you need to have testing as well, that's an option. You can complete your online portion of your visit. And then one unique thing to our online platform is that you can actually come in and have a molecular strep test. You can have a molecular COVID test. You can actually provide a urine test. Um, we can check your kidney function to see if you need a new antiviral, make sure if your kidneys um, can handle that. So we have the ability to do all those testing. And those are blood tests? Uh, one is a blood test, other all just swabs oh, okay. in the nose. Um, our COVID testers, uh, people are very familiar with the antigen versus molecular. Ours is a molecular, it's just a nasal swab. Okay. So it just goes in the tip of the nose. It's not the one that goes back to the brain almost. Um, mm -hmm. So patients like coming here because we have the ability to do that test. Yeah, you would think, especially COVID, that should be in the rear window here, mm -hmm. but it, we're still seeing we're cases. Still, unfortunately, we are still seeing some here, yeah. So, and then what if someone needs like a scan or, or some imaging mm -hmm. sort of thing? And yeah, so if you answer some questions, you have a, a video conference or a telephone conference with one of the providers and they determine that you need a higher level of care, they'll be able to recognize what symptoms you have and uh, what type of care you need, whether that's gonna be follow-up care down the road with your primary, um, or if you need to be seen at a urgent care or our facility, the urgency room, uh, we can do more than what a typical urgent care can because we do have the ability to do CT scans, ultrasounds. We have a complex lab, so we can do additional testing. And these providers, they're emergency medicine providers, so they're used to working in the local emergency department and at our facility here. And they recognize what needs to um, be brought to urgent care versus urgency room, or, or sometimes even going to the emergency department. They might say, you know, you gotta hang up, call 911. This is a life-threatening emergency and you need to go to the ER immediately. And, and they have the ability to, to recognize that. Yeah, that was gonna be my question, that people may not be familiar with the urgency room. Mm -hmm. How is it different from other type of medical care and stuff? Yeah, so we, we're, we are not an emergency department, but we're more than an urgent care because we do have the ability to do more testing than most um, urgent cares are able to do um, and initiating a lot of the um, common treatments that you do in an emergency department. There's certainly things that we can't do that the emergency department can do, like provide blood products for major trauma and stuff like that. But if patients feel like they're having bad abdominal pain, we have the ability to do the CAT scan to see if it's diverticulitis or appendicitis or colitis um, or if people have a bowel obstruction um, or we can do ultrasounds to look at the gallbladder or an ovarian cyst or torsion. So we can do all that testing and then um, oftentimes patients can go home, even in the local emergency department, um, probably about 25% of patients are admitted, the other 75% go home. So even here, you know, when patients come in, the majority of people do go home, but there, of course, every day there's people that need to be admitted that we work up here. So we initiate the treatment, then we, we attempt, and uh, most commonly we do direct admissions. Um, COVID has disrupted that a little bit, but if somebody has appendicitis, we talk to a local surgeon at one of our wonderful surrounding hospitals and say, hey, we got this patient with CT confirmed appendicitis without abscess or perforation, they need to have surgery. And we work with them to hopefully get them directly to the OR to have their surgery and go home. Um, that's always a goal, and you know, COVID and um, 
the results of that and what's happened with staffing has kind of uh, thrown a wrench into that to some degree, but we always strive for that and, and do what's best for the patient. And the urgency room is in, located in three different places? Yep, we're here in Egan, Vadnais Heights, and Woodbury. You can go online, you can see what our current wait times are. And um, sometimes people live in, in Woodbury, but it might be busy, busier there, and they look at, you know, our Egan site only has a 10 minute wait, so patients And you can tell online, like, yep. the wait you times You can see and the stuff. wait times, and you can also compare those to local hospitals as well. Typically, if we have a long wait, the hospitals are having an even longer wait as well. I have a question, though, about um, the online program care. Mm -hmm. um, what would be the cost to do that? How does that, and does insurance yeah. cover it? Yeah, so we accept all insurance, you know, traditional commercial insurance, United, Blue Cross, et cetera. We accept Medicare and Medicaid, of course, as well. Um, so the cost is going to be depend upon what your insurance is and what plan you have uh, with your insurance company. So if you're watching this right now mm -hmm. and you think, oh, I'm having a stomach ache or something, mm -hmm. they can start online. Uh, with they your could, online but if you're, if you're having abdominal pain, it's probably best to be seen in person. Mm -hmm. It typically takes a trained expert to press on your belly and determine what tests are needed. Um, but if you're, you know, if you have, you know, four kids and one of them got pink eye and you brought them in, they looked in the eye and determined it was just a pink eye, they needed an antibiotic eye drop. You know, you can go out to our online platform. You're like, you know, my one kid was seen determined to be simple pink eye conjunctivitis is on antibiotics. Now my other three kids have it as well. It's a, a great opportunity for online care. Um, so you don't have to, you know, load up all of your kids and bring them here to, to be seen as well. And you can just do all that virtually. Well, yeah. great advice as always, yeah. Dr. Rob Anderson. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. Thanks for coming out to our Egan location today. Thank you. Yeah. When I got the opportunity to get her, there wasn't no choice. I told myself, I'm going to take custody of my daughter. It's my baby. That's what we're supposed to do as men, take care of our home, build a foundation, you know what I'm saying? Love, our money, she's my purpose. I'm here to walk with her, hold her hand until she can walk alone. Ain't nothing like being a father in this world. Welcome back to Inside Healthcare. The World Health Organization reports that the rate of suicide has doubled since the onset of COVID-19, claiming the life of one person every 20 seconds in the world. 988 is a new national hotline number to help save lives. We talk with Dr. Renee Pentikoff about this new hotline and other ways to prevent suicides and save lives. But Dr. Pentikoff, it's great to have you back on Inside Healthcare. Can you tell us a little bit about this 988 hotline and, and what it's all about? Yeah, we're all just as mental health professionals are all really excited about the 988 National Suicide Prevention Lifeline number. It is a new, brand new, launched in July, three digit access number, um, not to necessarily replace the previous 1-800 number, but to allow for an easier to remember number for folks when they are in need of support. I was gonna ask why was it created? And that's partly yeah. the, I, I, the main reason, isn't it? Yeah. Easier for yeah. people to remember. I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I have some, some of my own hypotheses about why they picked 988, but um, it's, it's hard to misdial probably, right? With the two different numbers and easy to remember and a little bit like 911, I'm not sure. I'm just, just my own theories. But the 1-800 number will still be in effect. Um, the 273-8255 number that people are used to for a little, the lifeline, that will be um, forever in, um, in the works as well as the 988 number. But it's just really exciting to have this easier to remember number. Why yeah. important to have this and it's 24 seven, no matter where you live in the country. Yes, it's 24 seven, no matter where you live. The lifeline has been available and around for, oh, so, uh, you, since 2005 actually. And the lifeline is manned by, um, or the crisis workers are skilled and knowledgeable and supportive. And, and what's really interesting too, and I didn't know this until recently, there's also a lifeline chat that if you go on the website and you wanna just get some support and you're not necessarily in crisis, you can go on the web chat and just type in and kind of have a chat conversation with a crisis worker at Lifeline. 
too to get some support and some ideas and some resources. And there are 200 crisis lifeline centers across the country. Um, and so several of them are very localized and then they have some um, knowledge and awareness of local resources then too. And um, health professionals like yourself know that um, suicide is preventable and that things like the hotline and other training, people might be surprised to realize that it is preventable. And, yeah. and what can we do to make it preventable for these yeah. for someone in a suicide crisis? Yeah. 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 Suicide is preventable. It's one of the leading causes of death, especially of young people. It's the second leading cause of death of uh, adolescents and young adults across the country. Um, the good news is that it is presentable, like a preventable, excuse me, like you said. And the, the number one way to prevent suicide is to be brave and courageous and talk to each other about it. And we can learn these skills. One of the um, programs that I have facilitated is called QPR. It's question, persuade, and refer, which is what QPR stands for. Their website is qprinstitute.com if people wanna check it out. Um, and in the QPR training that I do, um, people come away learning how to ask really the really hard questions when someone they care about or someone that they know might seem to be acting differently. So you learn the signs to watch for in people that you care about. Um, and you learn how to ask the hard question. Are you thinking about suicide? Have you thought about suicide? Really hard question to ask. People are scared to say the word suicide, but what we know from the research is when we ask people if they're struggling and if they're having thoughts of suicide, Jody, they actually experience a decreased level of stress when we just ask the question. And then in QPR, the P stands for persuade. Um, in the training, the QPR gatekeeper training that I facilitate, um, we teach how to persuade someone to get help and then how to help them um, and refer them, that's the R, to getting resources and support. One of those resources you provide counseling for a number of individuals and, and various, various issues that are dealing yes. with them. Yes. I do. Yes, I do. Um, and, and like I said, when people do get referred um, and when people are open and able to talk about their struggles, their depression, their life stressors, and their suicidal thoughts, they get better, right? And that's, that's the most important thing to get people the help that they need. Mm -hmm. That saved lives. Final comments for our viewers and if they want some information about the QPR or other um, training and things like that, where should they go? Yeah, well, I am one of the co-founders of the Suicide Prevention Collaborative and we sponsor, we sponsored many, many QPR trainings. We're actually doing one today for the Washington County Attorney's Office. So that's really exciting. Um, and Suicide Prevention Collaborative has a website. SPC is suicidepreventioncollaborativemn.com. You can also get a lot of resources from NAMI and NAMI Minnesota, that's N-A-M-I. And of course, the lifeline that we just referenced, the three digit, or excuse me, where did I put this? Um, the website for the new three digit access 988 is 988lifeline.org. There's so many resources on there too for people to kind of learn some skills and strategies if you're worried about somebody who's struggling to get them help. Dr. Penikoff, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on Inside Healthcare and always great information. And oh, so thank, thank you, you for having me, Jody, and thank you for all the good work that you do. That's our program for you. Thank you for joining us. Join us again next time on Inside Healthcare. We'll see you then, everyone.